welcome to another episode of Prioritize the Arts Live. I am your host and executive director for artists working in education, LaShondra Vernon. And today's theme is about creative community development. Now this is the work that we do in the community where we are placing art in unexpected places. It's one of my favorite pieces of what we do at AWE here. So I'm going to bring in one of our directors, um, John, from our programs that are artists and residency based, but then also a lot of what we're doing in creative community development is his thought leadership. John, how are you this morning? I'm doing well. How are you, Lashandra? I'm wonderful, in a pretty good mood. Nice. It's Wednesday. Woohoo! <laughs> we're halfway through a week again. Um, so we are here to have a conversation about our work in creative community development. Um, it is a space where we develop people, we develop communities, and we do things beyond the trucks, the things that we've been known for. So why don't you say a little bit about what your work is like in creative community development? Absolutely. Um, so I think one of the roles artists working in education can play in creative community development is the conduit or the go-between um, between the creative and the community. And we work really hard to develop our artists professionally, um, starting from high schoolers, working their way up through college interns, assistant artists, and professional artists. And we teach them how to engage the community authentically, how to listen, how to create together, how to collaborate together. Um, and the end results are beautiful community art pieces and gifts to our neighborhoods. Um, Absolutely. And through that process, we're engaging youth, we're engaging community stakeholders, we're engaging city officials, we work with bids, NIDS, um, neighborhood organizations, the county parks, the libraries. Um, we're going to partner with the Department of Corrections coming up. So art can be found anywhere. And I think art should be found everywhere. Um, and that's just kind of the tip of the iceberg of what we do at AWE. That's right. You, you mentioned a couple of our partners, but one that um, I'm just going to share a little bit of footage of that I'd love you to talk a little bit about is the work that we've done with Sojourner Family Peace Center. So you can share, can you share a little bit about the healing art studio work that has happened in that space? Sure. Um, so we've been so fortunate to partner with Sojourner Family Peace Center's Futures program, which is their children's program. Um, and Sojourner provides essential services to families leaving domestic violence situations. Um, and supports them 100% through whatever they need with housing and whatever other needs um, might be present. And the kids do activities there um, in the evenings after school. So we go in and make art with the kids, which is just a healing process in itself. So we've been focusing on mosaic projects. Um, mosaics are a great way to involve everybody. Um, you get to break tiles with hammers, you get to make clay tiles, you get to paint. There's a lot of different um, kind of artistic activities involved with it. Um, and one of the kind of beautiful things about mosaics and about the program at Sojourner is that overall the art represents all these pieces coming together to make a whole or to make a beautiful thing. And sometimes in life, a piece might be broken or a piece might need to fit into another piece, but beauty is still present and um, the art really displays that healing and that beauty and that hope for a better future. Um, for sure. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's, it's really uh, amazing to find these little pieces of pop-up art all over the city of Milwaukee that we've been able to do. Um, but I really love the work that we've been able to do with neighborhoods and communities in a very unconventional community like Sojourner uh, Family Peace Center where families are living there. So that is a neighborhood, that is a community. Um, and so how to be a build, build community with the people inside of that building um, in a new way was really an exciting project. And I'm so happy to hear that we're gonna continue that project in 2021. 
So this is, what is this, the third or the fourth year? Uh, this will be our third year partnering together. Wonderful. So super exciting. A special shout out to Carmen Petrie and all of the staff over at Sojourner for including us. But uh, we are going to highlight one of the artists that was responsible for that work in a moment, and that is Linnea. Um, and so one of my favorite things about the art that we've done is we've worked with so many artists across so many diversities and so many cultural backgrounds. Um, but I really enjoy witnessing Linnea's work, experiencing Linnea's work. And so I'm gonna take a moment to introduce everyone to Linnea. on and off for quite a while now. Uh, I would say that my involvement with the Milwaukee community so far has been pretty vast. Um, AWA has been an organization that um, has allowed me to do that and like meet a lot of new people and work in environments that I wouldn't have under otherwise known about. Um, we did a project at Sojourner, uh, Sojourner Truth Center and um, that was just a really incredible experience. It was just transformative to see what the kids would come up with when we were there. And just to be around, um, just to be around kids in general has been very um, necessary for my mental health. I think we can learn quite a bit from children that we can't learn from adults. I think art is important for youth because um, it helps them um, sort out maybe some things they might be going through. I think we don't always have the necessary tools to talk about the things that we go through, even as adults. And I think art sort of replaces like the need to um, express it verbally. And um, it's, it essentially can be therapeutic for youth. And it's just important to recognize and celebrate all of our differences and the things that we're interested in. And I think art is a good way to channel that and to also just like share that with others. Um, it's just this, just to work with a youth council, I think it kind of um, reveals how much we need to rely on the community when uh, public art needs to go up. I think it's really important that people have a say in what surrounds their community and what they walk past by. And so it's been really interesting to hear like what these young people want to see around them. It's completely aligns with a lot of my values and beliefs. So it's like a perfect like balance. I feel like I want to, what I want to see is more art to surprise me. I want to see more public art, I think. And just like public art of people that, um, represent our community and just need to be celebrated, I think. And um, I feel like I find art, especially ex unexpectedly coming together through these projects that I work with, um, with AWE. And a lot of the youth ideas are really, um, they're really unique. And I just, and especially just like working with kids that come from many different backgrounds. I've worked with kids with different backgrounds throughout um, my career with AWD. And I think it's just like really interesting to see how um, each kid literally has a different way of expressing themselves. And I feel like that's sort of an ex unexpected like quality of like work collaborating with youth and allowing them to be creative and just um, sort of being there as a support guide and working with them. Um, so I feel like art is sort of everywhere and we all, we're all, I'm always finding art that I'm like unexpectedly um, becoming more familiar with over time. I'm gonna bring in John and Audrey to have more conversation. Hi, John and Audrey. Hi. Hello. 
Hello. How are you, beautiful people? Doing all right. Oh. Feeling the day. <laughs> so, lovely work by Linnea. Um, I know you guys have had an opportunity to work more closely with Linnea. And um, I think one of the important things that she talked about that really struck me is how being around children is good for her mental health. And I absolutely agree that, that children are a healing balm, especially in a world full of so many very rough places and spaces. So I'd love to hear from both of you how the work that you guys have been able to do in partnership with both the young people that we work with through the Rising Artist Council, but then also the artists and their opportunity to engage the community and the children. Um, what that experience has been like for each of you? Definitely. Um, I recently had the opportunity to work with Linnea, um, partnering with the Rising Arts Council. Um, we um, brought Linnea on to do a second installation of the social justice stroll that we were actually able to um, do last year um, along Belt Phillips. Um, and this time around, we wanted to bring Linnea in to talk with the members of Rising Arts Council and see the type of work that they want to see in their community, but also the type of social justice issues and topics that they wanted to discuss in their art as well. So we, um, we they partnered with over three weeks and discussed the type of artists that influenced them, the local activists that they were inspired by, and just having this honor, honest conversation of what it means to use art as as a tool uh, in bringing community together. For sure. John? So I so agree with Linnea where um, children and young people are just these bundles of abundant joy um, that we so need in the world right now. And I am so happy that our programs can create an environment um, for kids and for adults and for communities to come together and just enjoy themselves and enjoy, enjoy each other working towards um, a common goal of a public art piece or a public art program of some sort. Um, and it's just really inspiring. And that's what keeps me going, I think. Like, there's not many jobs where I drive home and I cheer up a little bit because I'm like, oh my gosh, we really did that today. My heart is so warm and fuzzy. Um, so, you know, being able to go to shelters or go to community centers um, and truly offer people experiences that just wouldn't have been there normally, but are so necessary for our, for our mental health, um, just means so much. And I hope everybody knows that, you know, your donations are really supporting that. And sure. the mural or the sculpture is a wonderful physical reminder of our presence in the community, but really those relationships and that space and that joy that is shared, I think is truly where the art takes place. Absolutely agree. That is the truth. You guys, I am really excited to watch the footage from our next artist. And so 2020 has been a heck of a year. Um, but one of the greatest things that I believe happened this year was the rise of Anna Rose Monaco. And I enjoyed uh, this new chapter in her creative experience. Um, and so we're going to share a little bit about her work. But then afterwards, I'm going to bring you guys back to kind of talk about the work that happened this summer a little bit more. Hey, everybody. My name is Anna Minako. I'm a local artist from Milwaukee. And here we have one of the pathway murals that we did through AWE this summer with our high school interns. Public art is really important to me because art uh, can be a source of inspiration for people of all ages, from anywhere in the world. Art inspires people and gives you a fresh perspective on life and allows you to express yourself and heal. And one of the reasons I love public art so much is because you shouldn't have to go to the museum to experience art, even though museums are great. Um, 
but art can be a part of your daily life and all of our daily lives and it gives you a sense of pride in your community and a sense of belonging to be able to express yourself through art and experience art on the regular. So uh, that's been one reason why working with AWE has been really rewarding for me throughout the years. And you should support AWE because then we can continue making public art installations. <laughs>
we are only featuring two artists today in our videos, but I do want to bring in all of our friends. So let's get all the friends in. We've got Rihanna. We've got Drea, and I'm going to remove the colorful thing so we can see her beautiful face. Um, so everyone, my question for you is, where have you found art in unexpected places? And it doesn't have to be an AWE installation, but you know, I imagine that that might come up once or twice because we do that. I can jump in right away. Yeah. Um, so this year, I guess I find art every day in unexpected places because I'm searching for it. And I really encourage everybody to do that as well. It just adds a, a layer of joy and brightness to your day, I believe. Um, but one of the places this year that was really special for me to find some unexpected art was at the Hope House. Mm -hmm. um, and we were lucky to get a really generous grant from Bader Philanthropies um, to complete their children's center. So um, it was a little, you know, when you're dealing with homelessness and immediate issues, um, you know, decoration and comfort can kind of fall by the wayside. But I think that's so important for residents. Um, so we were able to kind of revamp and rehaul their whole children's center. We installed an amazing mural um, by the artist Emma Daisy, and we got new furniture and new electronics and rugs and made it just a really comfortable, cozy, wonderful space. And a kind of unexpected surprise result of that is with all the virtual programming and virtual school this year, um, the kids who stay at Hope House stay in the Children's Center almost all day because they use that as their virtual school hub. So it was just perfect timing that we were able to transform it into a big art installation so they can spend their days learning in a colorful, happy, bright, cheerful place. And I think um, it just adds a lot of dignity and a lot of, um, you know, love and support for the people that get to use that that space every day. For sure. Who wants to go next? I'll jump in. So um, one of the places that I frequently find heart, art is just around my neighborhood. Um, so kind of reflecting on what um, Linnea was saying, you know, in terms of children and how they, they just teach us things that um, grown up sometimes can't. Um, so as I walk through the neighborhood with my own kids, uh, there are, there seems to be a, a lot of our neighborhood kids who like to create art and then hide it places for people to find, um, which I, I really love and the joy even on my own kids' faces when they see this like random painted rock or um, like, you know, a, a warmer than usual message that's done in like, you know, chalk on the sidewalk. Um, it's pretty amazing to see their reaction. Um, and I think it's just, it's just really great that, you, you know, you have these little kids creating these little mini works of art and leaving them places, not even fully understanding the impact that they're going to have on the person that's finding them. Um, and in our neighborhood, there's a large portion of neighbors. I mean, especially now with people being more at home, but even before that, there were a lot of neighbors who already did a lot of walking. It's a big dog neighborhood. Um, and you see, you know, a lot of like retired or elderly people walking around too. So I think it's just, it's reaching people in ways that I don't think they expect um, for it to touch them when they find this little precious piece of art. And I, I also don't know that the kids who leave them really understand the impact that it probably has. Um, so it's a really simple example, but I, I think it really goes to show the power of art um, that can show up with you know, in a really small way um, that doesn't take a lot of, of effort, but um, the creativity is definitely there. Who's next? Drea took mine too. That's what I was thinking since, that's okay, because it's true. Um, but I was thinking specifically around when I go for walks around my neighborhood, because that's the only thing to do, is um, there's so many people that have 
I think it's mostly children, but I think some adults too that have elaborate displays of homemade artwork hanging in their front, like big picture windows and on their front doors, um, just collages and uh, they're really using their creativity. And um, I love that there's just a couple houses where it's just obviously a couple kids live there and they're just, every window is filled with kid art. And I also remember earlier this year when we were doing our art hangs, that one of the artists showed that she and her daughter had made these terrific murals with just simple washable paint markers on their windows in the front of their house. And it just looked fan fabulous. And I just think something so easy to do, or as Drea mentioned, like just I, I've gone for walks too, where there's these elaborate kid chalk murals outside someone's house. And when I, it's totally unexpected and I'm walking and I see it, it totally makes my day. I'm gonna echo Drea and Rihanna here um, after going on many different walks over the past few months. Um, I've recently started um, um, walking along Bradford Beach lately, and especially during as it's colder, the colors have shifted a little bit, so everything's a little bit cooler, but a doddly brought me a lot more peace and centered um, feeling. And my most recent walk, I noticed that there is a lot of different rock towers actually that looks like people have created um, along um, along the shoreline. And it, there's something about it that um, people are like outside nature more, trying to get more with nature and trying to become one, one more with nature because I think one benefit of kind of limiting the kind of activities we do these days is getting back in touch with, with nature and just seeing how beautiful um, nature is and how there actually is art really that really lives outside of us. Um, and just being able to collaborate with nature in general to create art. I love how you guys like always make it where I don't know what I should say because you said so many things I wasn't even thinking about. That's the thing about unexpected places, right? Um, I, I actually echo everything that was shared as well. I agree. Um, I really loved the window installations that people have done um, while at home. And um, I'm grateful that that has been an outlet that people chose. It's a very productive way to, to meditate while creating, right? Like you can really just like create a piece of art and put it up and have a moment where no one's arguing in the house, where no one is like fighting over a toy because here's a marker for you, here's a marker for you, here's a paintbrush for you. Now let's do this together. It's just a really great way to reconnect. Um, the one that I had in my head was actually very personal for me and it's the reaction that I had when I saw the staircase in Silver City. The first time that I saw the staircase in the Silver City, I had just come to AWE um, and when I saw pictures of it is very different than when I went there physically and turned that corner. <laughs> and saw the staircase. And I was like, this is so tucked away. If I didn't have this scavenger hunt activity that we're doing as a team, taking pictures of art and finding things that we've created, I probably would have missed it. Um, and I, I think there was a really important moment in my life that there's a photo that I took there that really, when I look at it, it's an evolution picture. Like I am not that person anymore. I'm really a different person today than I was when I took this picture. And this picture really reflected a change in my career. My choice to choose joy as a career um, was reinforced by that, that feeling of turning that corner um, underneath a bridge in basically an alley. <laughs> <laughs> to hit the staircase and be like, oh my goodness. Um, it just was a piece of joy that I think will always stick with me because uh, it, it reflects the choice that I made to choose joy in my career. And it makes me happy. So I love what we're doing here with the live thing, but we have a reason to be here. We enjoy each other's company and we talk to each other often for work but we are here because we want the community to overall support AWE. So I just wanna acknowledge the amazing support that we've already received. Right now, we are at $98,339 raised. We have 85 donors that have contributed. Um, and I'm just so grateful for the outpouring from our community. Um, I have challenged some of my own friends to personally give and they have stepped up 
and um, I provided personal videos to all of them and lots of other people thanking them. And I just want to be really clear that we are overwhelmed by the support that we received in the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of so many challenges. And, and we are honored that you value the creative community enough to continue to provide this kind of support when lots of foundations and lots of entities are pivoting to things that are urgent needs like food and shelter. Um, those are still super important and we do not endorse pulling funds away from that emergent need, but we are grateful that some of you see that the arts need to be prioritized too. Um, so if there's anything anybody else wants to say, that's all that I have for this week. No special messages? Well, you know the message is just donate. The link is in the comments. The link is everywhere. There's an AWE post. And if you all help us cross the finish line of $150,000 raised by the end of the year, I promise we will all drop a dance video. Okay, I'm just kidding. I'm not, we're not doing that. <laughs> Don't you love the faces that everyone, what? We didn't discuss this in the staff meeting. No, we will not be dropping a dance video. But <laughs> we will continue to do the important work that we've done in this community with your support. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Keep on giving and please do something creative today. Bye-bye. <laughs>